Black lives. Black lives. Black lives. Black lives. Black female lives. Black trans lives. Black queer lives. Black undocumented lives. Black Muslim lives. All black lives. Thank you, thank you. As I said in the beginning, the idea to organize this protest started yesterday. So I did not write like a very long speech, I just wrote a few notes and tried to speak a little bit from the heart. There are a few things that I would like to say and I don't have that much time. First of all, I would like to thank everybody for being here. If you can see what I can see, it's crazy how many people are here, I can't even count. But I think more than a thousand people showed up within one day to show solidarity. With our brothers, sisters and non-binary people in the United States. I'm looking at you too. And earlier today and this week, I had a short talk with a lady. I think she should be somewhere here as well. A Surinamese elder, she called me, she works at the radio mat, and I picked up the phone and she just broke down crying, literally crying. She's Surinamese, but she said, you know, the images that I saw of um, George Floyd being killed, being assassinated by the police just broke my heart and she broke down in tears. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't sleep well the whole week, seeing the images of brothers and sisters trying to stand up for their right in a non-violent manner and still being confronted with so much police violence. So we thought we have to make a statement, we have to show our solidarity. And not only that, we also have to show and make our voices be heard that also here in the Netherlands and in Europe, institutional racism is a big problem. Four years ago, I had the privilege to be in Atlanta for a few weeks and it was a summer in which the same thing happened. But instead of George Floyd, instead of Ahmaud Arbery, instead of Breonna Taylor, it was Alton Sterling, it was Philando Castile who were killed by the police. And I was there ironically to learn about the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s. And I remember quite clearly that on one day we went outside and I saw a mass of people just like now protesting for their rights. And there was one beautiful thing that I learned which I would like to share with you. It was a chant by a person, some of you may know her, some of you may know I work at the Black Archives, we have a lot of books, I brought one with me. It's a book of Asata Shakur. And in that book she wrote a beautiful thing and I would like you to join me in chanting some of her words. It goes a bit like this. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our time to oh, it's a good song, good song. Again, let's write again. It is our dirty, our... Sorry. It's a bit hot, you know, I'm a bit nervous. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We will love each other and protect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Let's do it again. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We will love each other and protect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. One more time with your fists in the air. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We will love each other and protect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Thank you. This morning, I woke up Wow. This morning I woke up. Yes, yes. You can go. 
This morning I woke up and I got a Facebook memory showing that it's exactly four years ago that one of the Black Brothers in the Netherlands, Mitchell Winters, died because, of, because he was hit with police bullets. I'm looking at on that side of the square and I see a beautiful but tragic poster, a banner with a picture of Mitch Henriquez. This month it will be five years ago that he was killed, suffocated by the police, just like George Floyd. And when you look at Dutch media, they tend to point the finger like, hey, that racism, the Americans, they're so bad. Institutional racism, they're so savage. Without looking at the racism that is right here within Dutch borders. Today is also June 1st. Normally on June 1st is the start of the Memory Waka Kiti Koti, the commemoration of the abolition of slavery. Normally, one of our brothers, one of our elders, Pedas Young Loy, would organize a walk from the house of the mayor to the monument of slavery in Easter Park. Unfortunately, he passed away last year. But we are here on Dam Square. And Dam Square, when you look at this building, some of you may know that the government, the city of Amsterdam, used to be the owner of the colony Suriname. So the city of Amsterdam literally was involved in the trade in enslaved Africans. And when we look at all these problems of police killings, institutional racism, slap the pit, it's a legacy of colonialism, of slavery, of imperialism. And thousands of people have died and continue to die every day not just because of police violence, but also on the borders of Europe and other ways. So what I want to do now and end with, so I want to ask you to put your fists in the air and let's have one minute of silence for all those people who died because of police violence, because of racism, our ancestors. And I would like the people in the back who are drumming to stop with it now. Please intervene so we can have for one minute of silence.